started. Hallelujah, everybody. Welcome to Refreshing Time. This beautiful Tuesday afternoon here with Lady Red Rosie Noah. I'm so glad to be here today. God has made it possible for us to see another week. What a blessing to be here in God's marvelous presence. Um, this is episode number five. Episode five here on Refreshing Time. We are still on the series, This Journey Called Life. Um, understanding times and seasons this journey called life understanding times and season and this is episode number five today's episode is part two of understanding times and seasons in episode four last week we looked at understanding times specifically we learned some great things and so if you missed out on episode uh, number four you need to go back watch it take some notes because it's going to help you understand um, even much further today as we look at episode five seasons amen so episode five today we are doing understanding seasons praise god we established from the get-go that there are times and seasons that god has instituted and put in place and these times and seasons we learn um some of it are physical and some of it are spiritual and so what I'm doing today here in episode five is to bring you to a place of understanding as a child of God, as a believer, to know the seasons you're in. Yes, there are physical seasons, but most importantly, you need to understand spiritual seasons. Amen. And so um, for today's episode five, like I said, we're going to look at what season means. So when we talk about a season, what are we talking about? A season is a time that is characterized by a particular circumstance or feature. That's a season. Glory be to God. Um, it is also a suitable or a natural time or occasion. Um, you can also say that a season is a period of time that is characterized or associated with particular activities or phenomena. Um, and so seasons are within times did i did i come again should i come again okay seasons are within times in a time period in a certain time god allows certain seasons to come into our lives for so many reasons for so many purposes and so you must understand here today in episode number five that you as a child of god you as a person as long as you are on planet earth as long as you are here, you will go through certain seasons. Actually, in our physical world, we have seasons. We know we have, in some parts of the world, they have the raining seasons and the dry seasons, right? Some parts of Africa, the African continent. When you come on this side of the world, we have four seasons here in the United States. What do we have? Or, you know, North America. We do have the fall season where all the leaves begin to fall and all the leaves begin to turn colors out. I love it. It gives us such a beautiful scenery when you're driving out to look at it, right? And then it moves us into the winter season where it's very cold and, and we have the snow and whatnot, right? And then we transition into spring season. When you had enough snow and enough winter, honey, you're ready for spring. Yes. You're ready to bring all the cleaning stuff out, clean things out and pull out your spring clothes and, you know, you are, you are in that season. That is spring, right? And also if moves us into summer when it's hot and we come out and we barbecue and we go out and we have vacations so we have four seasons on this side of the world every season which is within the calendar year we're in 2023 so 2023 obviously has the four seasons in here within these seasons every season has its own weather Every season has its own clothing that you need to wear you will never find somebody summertime wearing their winter jacket it, it, it's out of place it doesn't work like that amen and so we understand physically that we have physical seasons which is the different seasons we go in like i just explained the four seasons these are physical we go through them all the time it's amazing that you know some people believe that when they go through certain seasons like the winter seasons and whatnot they get depressed they get moody by summertime or spring they're happy they're coming out everything is wonderful 
wonderful. Um, it's amazing. You know, you hear all kinds of stuff in every season and the kind of good God Almighty, the kind of disease or allergies or whatnots that are out there. But I pray that that will not be our portion, that we for all seasons will be in good health. We, all of us in, in all seasons, will be walking in our high places. We will be sound. Everything will be great to the glory of God. And so let's move further today here. You're still watching me, episode number five. If you're watching, would you share with somebody, invite people to come on that they need to come and listen to the word of God. They need to watch this. They, they, they need to see um, what God is doing in our lives in this season. This is critical. You hardly find um, a lot of preachers teaching or preaching the authentic word of God just to equip believers like you and I. So I encourage you, get somebody to come on and, and share with somebody. Let them know that Lady Rebo is in our here. See on Refreshing Time, teaching the word of God. And we are on episode five. Praise God. So let's look at some details when it comes to seasons. Now, see. Seasons are designed by God, and every season has a beginning and an end. If you're taking notes, write it down. Every season has a beginning and has an end. There's a start time to every season in your life. That's point number one that you must understand. Number two, the God designs and appoints seasons within a specific time frame. God does that. Everyone of us has an appointed time. Every one of us has an appointed season. Glory be to God. Amen. Also, that we must also understand that each season is not going to be permanent. Seasons change. Seasons are dynamic. They're not static. It moves. It changes. There's movement. There's progression. You have to understand that. Praise God. You must also understand that the seasons go through some kind of evolution. You evolve as you go through various seasons in your life. And so you have to be in a place of understanding. You have to be in a place where you embrace it, where you are ready for it. You psych yourself for that season that you're in. Glory be to God. Also, you must understand that in every season, God will reveal the purpose of that season to you. God will let it come to life. God will, will open your eyes, will open your understanding. Understanding, to understand why this particular season came your way. Why am I going through this season? So the purpose or God's purpose concerning that will be revealed as you engage in all the activities that come with that particular season. Glory be to God. Now, all these things we are talking about, that the seasons of our life will, will definitely birth change in your life. Whether you're ready for it or not, it is going to birth change. Whether it's going to be negative change or positive change we're yet to see you and i are going through different seasons so you must understand that every season you go through is going to birth change it's going to be different it's going to be unique every season of your life is going to demand two things two most important components every season has seed time and every season has harvest time these two components you can never do without them there's always going to be a seed time which is a sowing time and a harvest time which is your reaping time it is characterized um, for all the seasons that you're going to encounter in your life so just a quick overview if you're just joining me god bless you for coming remember the seasons are designed by god within the time frame number one it has a beginning it has an end number two number three that it evolves you go through a certain process praise god Number four, God will reveal his purpose for you while you're going through that season. Five, that every season, that's what demands a seed. It demands seed time and harvest time. Six, that every season in your life, number seven, is going to birth change in you. Glory be to God. Listen, if you understand this concept, if you understand the seasons are characterized by these things, then as we move further today in uh, episode five, you will begin to appreciate and embrace and every season that God has purpose under the sun that we live in um, and this planet that we live on. And so let's remember that when we talk of seasons, we have physical seasons, all the four seasons or two seasons or wherever you live in the world, and we have spiritual seasons. Let's get started, shall we? Yes, this was just the intro. Episode five today, we are, we are kicking off with spiritual seasons, spiritual seasons. 
seasons. Glory be to God. And in spiritual seasons, we are going to look at day seasons, night seasons. Glory be to God. I know a lot of preachers and teachers who teach different aspects and dimensions of times and seasons. But what God has commissioned me to do or to talk about here is dealing with these particular ones. So spiritual season. Now, Psalm 16 verse 7 says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless Adonai. I will bless the owner of life. I will bless the master of life. He said, I'll bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. My heart instructs me in the night seasons. I bless God for the counsel he gives me during night seasons. I bless God because in my night seasons, my heart instructs me. There is instruction that happens during night seasons. So for under spiritual seasons the first aspect we're looking at here in, up on, um, in episode five is night seasons if you're taking notes write them down because we're going to go through a few things here praise god isaiah 50 verse 10 the book of the prophet isaiah chapter 50 verse 10 says who is among you who fears the lord who fears adonai who fears him he said who obeys the voice of his servant praise god yet who walks in darkness and has no light let him trust and be confident in the name of adonai let him be confident and have trust in the name of the lord and let him rely on his god glory be to god my god we're getting heated up this afternoon here on episode five my god listen Isaiah 50 verse 10 has laid the premise for us today in episode five as we're looking at understanding in seasons and in seasons we're looking at a spiritual season and the subcategory is night season praise god it says who's the one who fears god every child of god listen and listen to me clearly every believer will go through night seasons when it comes to spiritual seasons you go through your night and your day in your night season scripture says from the prophet isaiah it says that in this season god gives you counsel in your night seasons god is instructs you there is instruction in your nice season you cannot go through a nice season with and then miss out the commandment of god and miss out the teachings of god and miss out everything god is trying to instruct you on it comes with the terrain of nice seasons and then it says in your nice season these are people who fear god we're not talking about unbelievers we're not talking about somebody who doesn't reverence god or know god or fear him it's those who fear god these are the people who go through nice seasons it says those those who obey that means you fear him number one and you walk in obedience the fear of god is in you and you walk in obedience you obey the voice of god you obey the word of god you obey divine instructions you are the one i'm talking to today yeah 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 glory be to god you are the one i'm talking to and so the bible says that you go through dark seasons night seasons why there is a reason and a purpose but it says that when we go through night seasons our trust and our confidence must be in the name of the Lord. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and we are saved. The name of the Lord. The Bible says God has given us a name that is above every other name. My God. Every name under the planet submits to the name of Yeshua. Yeshua, the son of the living God. Every name in heaven uh, on the earth, under the earth, salutes, bows, uh, uh, submits to that name. Yeshua submits to that name named jesus christ the son of the living god it said that you and i to even step into or begin to walk out our nice seasons we must have the fear of god in us we must be walking in obedience and most importantly we have to have absolute trust in god trust in god because the terrain you're walking in is dark and slippery it's a dark road you've never navigated it before this is a season that we're going to look at additional things that will happen we're about look at the activities that happen in nice seasons this is why you need to have your confidence in god what of god says we should never put our confidence and our trust in the arm of flesh the arm of flesh will always fail us human beings are human i always say this we are capable of any abnormal behavior yeah yeah we can change in the morning and we're a different person by night we can say one thing in one season and change what we said we said we committed but now we we are no longer committed to it we vowed but then we broke our vow that is human 
human nature, but I pray that we get perfected as children of God, where we come to a place that we have the mind of Christ, we have the nature of, of Christ, and that we behave as sons of the Most High God, that our yea is yea and our nay is nay. Glory be to God. And so again, have confidence in God in nice seasons. He said, you must rely total dependence on God. In nice seasons, your trust, your confidence, and your dependence is one. 110 percent i won't even end 100 percent 110 percent on god and nobody else because jesus yeshua is the light of the world he's the one leading the way you are just following the spirit of god is the one leading the way you are following even in your night nice seasons glory be to god amen and so if you are not in proper standing, you are not in obedience, you don't fear god and you're going through all kinds of trials and whatnot is it possible that it it's also something from the camp of the enemy because you're already a child of disobedience. We shouldn't confuse them. Praise God. Nice seasons. We're still talking about what are the activities or what are the occurrences that happen? Who, what kind of person are we even during nice seasons? Glory be to God. Now, in your nice seasons, like I said, you fear the Lord. You walk in obedience. You are firmly planted in the house of God. You are firmly planted in the kingdom of God. You are not living a life of compromise. You don't have one foot here, the other foot in the world. You, you are not in church one time and you, you are out here with the devil having a good old time balling out. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking of you are firmly planted like a tree by the river. My God, we'll get there uh, down the road in the other episodes. Number four, you are fully committed. You are faithful to your purpose. You are being faithful to your assignment. You have not left your post. You are in assignment. I mean, you are in proper alignment. You're doing what God has called you to do. And so you are committed and you are faithful in your nice season. This is not when you are waving. This is not when you are not even sure. No, you know what it is. Number, number five, you are spirit led. Those who are led by God are the sons of God. They are the hewers of God. You are the mature sons of God. And so you are going on, uh, on a path or a journey of maturity. God is about to mature you. God is about to bring you to a level of maturity in him. So that you can be able to fulfill your destiny and your purpose. And in this season, number six, you walk by faith and not by sight. Habakkuk chapter two, two to four, it says what? talks about writing the vision, make it plain. And when you get to verse four, what does it say? It says that what the just shall live by his faith. My God, faith is a currency in the realm of the spirit. Faith is a vehicle in the realm of the spirit. Faith is your title deed. You have to be able to walk by faith and not by what you see because you'll be influenced by your physical environment during this particular night season. It's a spiritual season, but your physical environment might try to influence your night seasons, might try to derail you, might try to get you discouraged, broken down, beat down. You don't need all that. All you must understand are these Six things we're talking about that you walk in the fear of God, number one. Number two, you walk in obedience. Number three, you are firmly planted in the house of God with proper spiritual covering and good fellowship with the brethren. Number four, you are committed and faithful to the purpose or your assignment that God has given you. Number five, you are spirit led. And number six, you walk by faith and not by sight. This is where your soul, this is where your, 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 your person as a child of God should be during your night seasons, during your night seasons. Glory be to God. So six things, make a note. Now, what are the activities? Psalm 30 verse five says, for his anger is for but a moment his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping, wailing, tears, pain, struggles, challenges will happen for a night. You have to endure. The key word is what? Is endurance, perseverance during night seasons. It's a weeping may endure for a night, but joy will break forth at dawn. Joy will break forth in the morning so during your nice seasons there are some activities that will characterize it all i'm doing is highlighting it laying it out so that when it happens you wouldn't think something strange happened to you you wouldn't say oh why me whoa me god why not somebody else who else should it be it is you because god is bringing you to a place of maturity god is bringing you to a place of fulfillment and so your character has to be pruned my god your your character has to be refined it has to be shaped 
saved. God needs to bring you to a place that you bring praise and glory to his name. And therefore, your nine seasons is going to be dark. It's going to be filled with sometimes with weeping, with pain, and everything that might be sorrowful. And you might not like it. It's very uncomfortable. That's how nine seasons are. Glory be to God. Now, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10, the scriptures say, Behold, I have refined you. Yeah, yeah. He said, I have refined you, but not as silver. God said he's not refining you and I as silver. He said, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. A furnace. <laughs> An omen. <laughs> Uh, triple, double down, good God Almighty, of affliction. That's Isaiah 48, 10. God said, I have refined you. And so in nine seasons, your nine seasons are your refining seasons. Your nine seasons are the seasons that God will, will, will bring you through a test. Your faith is it's tested during nine seasons. You claim you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. You claim you fear him. You serve him. You love him. You obey him. Now your faith is going to be tested. And this comes in the form of nine seasons. Glory be to God. You know, Job 23, 10. Who knows brother Job in the Bible? You know, everybody knows Job. Nobody wants to walk where Job walked. Believe you me. Job says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Somebody watching me you're coming out as gold hey glory be to god you will be refined as gold amen god is refining you taking out all the impurities taking out all the flaws taking out all the weaknesses from you it's going to be so hot it's going to be so uncomfortable you say god sometimes you pray to god get me out of here god take me out of this trial take me out of this time of testing i don't like it it's full of tears and pain and disappointments god where are you and sometimes when you cry out, it seems that God didn't hear you. Mm -mm. Sometimes you cry out and it seems like you are alone on this journey. You're like, God, I don't hear your voice. I don't hear your reassurance. I, I don't hear you say it's going to be okay. It's like silence. It's quiet. When the pin drops, you can't even hear it. This is nice seasons. My God. But guess what? You are coming forth. You are in the furnace of a season. You are in there being baked, being cooked, being roasted, being twisted. Turn around, my, 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 because the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the ninth fruit of the Spirit, uh, uh, has to be what? Be brought in you. You have to mature because by our fruit, they will know that we are sons and daughters of God. And so our ninth season comes in to prepare us. It comes in to take out all the dead uh, branches and dead leaves on us and dead roots and whatnot. And God is doing a new work, a refining work. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, is is the refiner's fire. He comes to refine you. When you read Malachi, he says that he is the fullest soap. He cleanses, my God. And so in your nice season, you must understand that it's your season of trial. It is your season of testing. It is your season of refining. You, you're tried, you're tested, you're refined. Hey, you're coming out as gold. I feel it. I am coming out as gold. You are coming out. And you know, you can't say that I've been in the furnace for too long, God. Look at how anointed I am. Look at how I've traveled. Look at how I'm doing your work. And I'm still going through trials and afflictions. Yeah, you are still going through it because of the level God wants to elevate you to. Because of the level of glory God wants you to bring to the kingdom of God. And so God cannot allow your flaws and your weaknesses to get in the way when you are in full uh, throttle uh, accomplishing your purpose and your vision in life. Your season of trial. All of a sudden you find yourself in a crisis. My God, you wake up one morning and it's like there's a breach in the wall. What kind of a devil came in here and, and caused all this mess? It's not the devil. It's not the devil. It is God bringing you to a place of refining. My God, my God, my God. It's your season of refining. Your faith will be tested in your ninth season. It's a season where your faith is tested. Let me read First Peter chapter 1, 6 to 7. If you are watching, take notes. Let's write it down. It says, in this you greatly rejoice. Hang on one second. Like sometimes when I read scripture, it's like, it's like a, a, a you know, you hear something like um, an irony. You, you, you hear that the good and the bad in the same sentence. How do you even rejoice in trial? My God. How do you even keep your joy in the midst of your nice seasons when it looks like all your strength is gone? How do we rejoice? How? The word of God said, the joy of the Lord. 
Lord. It's our strength. You know, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is derived, something happens, you're happy for a time, for a short time, and that's it. But the joy of the Lord is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And once you have the joy in you, through the good, the bad, and the ugly, you don't have a sour face. Like, you know, you're sucking on lemons. Oh, no, no, no. You know, the joy and uh, encourages you. They, the joy energizes you. People look at you and say, but she's going through a lot. But he's going through. Yet he or she has not lost her joy. My God. It says, in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while. If you're watching me, just say to yourself, a little while. A little while, just just a short time, just a short period. If need be, you have been grieved by various trials. It is no one trial, girl. It is no one trial, sir. It is various trial. It's like the trials never end. One is about to end and one comes up. And while one is rolling out, there's another one simultaneously. You're like, God, this furnace is too hot. You're heating it up. He said, you have been grieved. You will be offended. You will be accused. You will be betrayed. You will be disappointed. People will give up on you. They're going to lie on you. They will accuse you. They will do all kinds of things to you. It's your time of suffering. It's your time of grief when you're going through night season. That's why I said weeping may endure for the night. You're going to Cry all kinds of tears in prayer and on your pillow and in your prayer closet. My God, maybe the world might not see you crying, but honey, you're crying. Ah, yeah, they all see. I feel it. My God, somebody's going through nice seasons, mm -mm. and you feel lonely. It said that the genuineness of your faith. You said you have faith, right? Our 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 brothers from Nigeria, Nigeria, we say Abby. You said you have faith. Oh, yeah, you claim you have faith. You claim you are a faith general. You've been saved for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you got this? He said the genuineness of your faith will be tested. I have seen people come to the house of God. And when they were going through their season of refining, of trial, of testing, they felt miserably. Like they felt miserably like nobody's business. They just put it down and said, I'm not, I'm not I didn't sign up for this, guys. Gotta go. They're gone. They are hopping. They are skipping. They think it may be they move from one one uh, one fellowship to another, one ministry to another, one pastor to another. It will solve the problem. It is not your movement that is solving the the problem. Like I said, in your nice season, remain firm, remain planted, remain in position because you have to be ready for the fight. Is a fight, my God. That's why we call it the fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Your faith will be tried. When all hope is gone when everything has turned on you will your faith still stand will you still be on your feet will you still say i love god says oh they slay me i'm so serving we are killed all day long but yet we don't give up in faith we stand strong we stand tall we don't bow down we don't throw in the towel we don't give up and we don't give in the genuineness of who you say you are will be tried and tested the fake ones will be weeded out out the weak ones will be weeded out until you learn to pass your time of trial and testing the word of god said be much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of jesus christ you're going to get a revelation of who god is during your night nice season hey glory be to god you will get to see an aspect of god you never knew not that it didn't exist. His name is the I am that I am. His name is Yahweh. This is when you get to see who he is. Ah, my God, I feel it. You thought you knew God, maybe as a provider, as a healer, or as a whatever. But in this time of refining and trial, God will bring you into a deeper level, dimension of who he is. And when you come to know that revelation of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, when you get to know who he really is and you've built your faith against all odds, honey, the Bible says that you bring praise. Look at the levels. There's praise. There's honor and there's glory. My God. People begin to praise the God you serve. Ha, when you read scripture, what is it? Let's praise the God of what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's praise the God of Daniel. Let's praise the God of Elijah. Elijah. People will praise your God. People will begin to testify 
testify that my God, this one is indeed a servant of God. This one is indeed a woman of God, a man of God. When I went through all kinds of trials, we still go through trials, I'm still going through them, still going through refining, my God, my God. And I've walked with God since I was 11 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born again at 11, filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, walking in the supernatural, walking, my God, in the power of God from 11. Yet, even till now, decades later, here I am. Faith is still being tried and tested. My God. So don't even look at your age and think your age should be the determinant factor. As in, oh, I'm done with all the testing and the trials. Ha, my God. Based on the mandate God has given you, based on the new territory God is asking you to occupy, based on your specific call that God has given you, I'm talking to somebody today, you might have to go through another round of trial. You might have to go through another round of refining because every level and its demons, every level and its challenges, every level and its anointing. Come on, who am I talking to? Hey, glory be to God. It said that people will bring honor. People will begin to honor the name of the Lord. You'll be honored. Let me tell you, where you've been dishonored, you'll be honored. Where they have looked down on you, betrayed you, stepped on you, abused you, misused you. Come on, all the words in the, in the word that, that you can think about, God is about to bring honor. Where your name was despised, God will bring you honor. Where you were shamed, my God, God is about to honor somebody. The word of God says he's a lifter of my head. My God, I see your head being lifted this afternoon wherever you are because you stood the test of time, because you stood your ground and said, I'll never give up. I will still hold on to the name of the Lord. I still have confidence in the God that I serve. Glory be to God. It says, and glory. Let me tell you, there's nothing like basking in realms of glory. The glory of God. In the glory is all beautiful things and all kinds of blessings that God has for you and I. You want to come from a level of praise, a level of honor to a level of glory. From glory to glory. We are going from glory to glory, level to level, anointing to anointing. Is somebody hearing me today? I give God praise for your life. In your nice seasons, hey, I'm, I'm excited today. I, I hope I can stay on course and on time. I have little time left today in episode five. The activities that you are going to see with your nice season. Number one, you will be strong Stripped off all flesh-led activities. Anything that has to do with the flesh will be stripped off of you during your nice seasons because you are supposed to be spirit-led, not flesh-led. What do I mean? Yeah, you're human. Yes, you're flesh. Blood runs through you. But anything that influences our world by sight, by the comfort, that I need a lot of comfort. I have to have money in my bank account. My marriage should, should, should be like this. My children should be like that. My home should be like this you want all the comfort and all the bells and whistles that come with luxury and comfort right uh-uh no your flesh is not gonna be comfortable your flesh will be challenged come on you'll be challenged to fast and pray more than you've ever done done before you'll be challenged to sacrifice more than you've ever done this flesh will no longer have dominion over you come on you are a spirit being you have a soul and you live in the body time for the spirit man to control the flesh because this flesh is influenced by sight by touch by smell by what we hear. And so no longer will you be tossed to and fro by flesh-led activities. Number two, we are looking at activities during your nice seasons. You will have to die to self. Ah, uh, yes, I did it. I went there. Death to self. It is no longer I will live, but Christ who lives in me. Forget about your personal will and personal whatever you want to do. You're going to die to self. That is why when people hurt you, hurt me, when people betray us, they break our hearts. They do all those things because we have died to this flesh. These emotions have no control over our soul. My God, that's why you and I can live a life and not be bitter and not be resentful. Oh, is somebody hearing me? You know, recently I was watching something on TikTok about a pastor and a wife who have deserted their faith. They turned their church into a farmhouse, use it for farming. And not only that, they started smoking and doing all kinds of crazy stuff on TikTok. And I wish I was live when they were live and tell them a thing or two that you it's either you repent and get back to your time of trial and refining. Why do we entertain such foolery in this generation? Why do we entertain such craziness in this generation, bringing shame to the house of God? And then I saw an 
episode where the woman was telling her young child, a boy, that he should never trust God. He should never believe in God. That God is a liar. That he can't depend on God. She was full of pain because she said people didn't treat them right. And people gave up on them. It tells me your faith is weak, woman. You're weak. The Bible says that if your strength fails in the day of adversity, then your strength is weak. When a time of trial and testing came, you couldn't take it, could you? Do you know the number of times we have been betrayed? We have been, uh, uh, they've done wrong to us. Do you, know the, do you know the number of people I've encountered in my life? You've done good to you. Even went to a point almost cutting your head to put on a silver platter for them. Yet they turn their back on you. Yet when God blesses them, it's like you never even existed. They don't know you. They turn their back on you. They leave you when you are at your lowest low. Lowest low. I remember I went through a season. A season of health challenge. Went through all kinds of stuff. And I had to come out and try and catch up with work and everything else. That is when some people decide, yeah, we're going to leave you alone. You, you go, you're on your own, woman. You're on your own. And the Holy Spirit said, let me take you to the book of John. So the Holy Spirit took me there and said, when a time came in Jesus' life, people began to leave him because of everything he was saying. And they couldn't take it. They couldn't comprehend it. And Jesus turned to the disciples and said, would you also leave? And Peter said, to whom shall we go to? You are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. Let me tell you something. You have to understand that you must die to the self. You cannot be bitter. You cannot be upset. You cannot be uh, have unforgiveness in your heart. I always tell people, I'm not going to hell over you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let your, whatever you cost me, your hurt, your pain caused me to be in bitterness and unforgiveness, and I end up in hell. Hell is too hot. There's no exit, by the way. <laughs> one way in, one way street. You ain't coming out. My God. That's what am I telling you? If you're listening to me, if anybody has done you wrong, forgive them, for they don't even know what they do. They don't even know that you are going through your trial and you're going through that season, and they were there to help refine your character and help refine you, but they also gave up on you and walked away. My God. People will always come and go. You know, life is like a revolving door. There are people who come in at different times and different seasons. Don't fall to them. Some of them don't know. Some of them, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. But you that I'm talking to during your nice seasons, you have to die to yourself and let the spirit of God lead you. That's when you listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit. That's why you allow the Holy Spirit to order yourself. That's why you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you the way you go. Because it said God will give you counsel and will instruct you in your nice seasons. Number three, please note. Hey, you don't like this one let me tell you in your nice seasons you'll be despised you will not be appreciated you'll be dishonored take it it's gonna happen during your nice season nice season number four you will encounter hardships struggles challenges it's part of nice seasons just be ready for it difficulties not one it comes continuously like 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 nobody's business number five you may encounter loss great loss great pain you may encounter rejection you may encounter betrayal you may encounter this Appointment is part of your nice seasons. Number six, even you may encounter some health challenges. Have you ever wondered? You're like, God, I worship you, I preach, I teach, I'm faithful, I fear you, I walk in obedience, I listen to the Holy Spirit, I pay my tithe, I pay my offering, I redeem my vows, I give alms, I help the poor, I help those around me. Yet you are going through a health challenge. You say, but but you said by your stripes we're healed. Yet look at the life of Job. Look at Job. The physical ailments Job went through, the physical pain he went through, yet he was still in the season of trial and refining. So you may have some financial challenges. You, let me tell you, in your nice seasons, it looks like every money got wings and flew away from you. <laughs> like, like, what happened, God? It's like, I'm working hard, but yet I have nothing to show for. I'm trying, but the doors are not opening. It's part of your nice seasons. You're going to encounter stress and struggles. And the part that I want you to understand that there are going to be people who are going to walk out on you. But remember this. Romans chapter 8, 20 says, 28. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Because you carry purpose. Because purpose drives you. Because you carry an assignment, a divine mandate. Because of that, everything that will happen in your life, 
And because you love God, everything that happens will work together for your good. If you don't love him and you don't have any purpose or you're not walking according to his purpose, then, then you, you should be concerned. But Romans 8, 28 says that all things will work together for the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. God's going to let it work as you love God and he has set his love upon you. And God will make sure that everything will come into alignment to help you to fulfill your purpose. Praise God. That is night seasons. My God, I hope you took notes. When your morning comes, it said joy comes in the morning. Psalm 30 verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When your day season comes, we're wrapping up on day seasons. First Peter 5 10 will happen. It says, and after you have suffered a little while. Suffering is part of Christian life. If any pastor tells you suffering is not part of your Christian life, they lie to you. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. You think a cross is a fun thing? It's an easy thing? It's not. He said, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, number one, restore. Number two, confirm. Number three, strengthen. Number four, establish you. During your day seasons, your joy will break forth in the morning. Your joy will be restored. Your joy will come. Day seasons, your light will shine. Shall rise and shine for what your light has come. And the glory of God has risen upon you because God brings you through praise, honor, and brings you to realms of glory. Hallelujah. And so during your day seasons, you will realize that number one, your character would have been refined and built very strongly for purpose. My God, who I am today is nothing compared to who I was 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. I may have some character traits, but I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm wiser. Glory be to God. Because of trial and testing. Number two, Two, in your day seasons, you realize that you walk in a certain type of strength. Nothing breaks you. Nothing puts you under. Nothing oppresses you. My God, you are on top day in, day out. No matter what, you realize that you are fortified. You are strengthened by the strength of God. Number three, God says in your day seasons, I will restore you. He said, I will restore the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar ate away. Your latter rain will be greater than the former. Somebody listening to me. In your day seasons, God will restore. God. God will bring you those destiny helpers. God will bring you the genuine people. God will bring you the loving people. God will bring you that destiny spouse, that destiny friend, my God. God will bring the right people to build ministry with you. Glory be to God. In your day seasons, your life will be restored. When Job was restored, God restored him double, double, double. What does scripture say? I'll give you double for your trouble. Somebody watching me, double for your trouble is coming. Yes, double for your trouble is coming. This month of May, this year, 2023, you've already been through trials of Going through what God says, I'm going to give you double. I will restore you. I will restore you. Glory be to God. Now, number four, you will be confirmed, you'll be affirmed, and you'll be endorsed. Somebody watching me, you are getting heavenly endorsement. God will talk to people behind the scenes to look for you. People will begin to hunt you down. They want to hear a word from you. They want to have you minister to them. They want to have you come to be a blessing. Let me tell you, there are people looking for you. Somebody's watching me. You have people looking for your product, your service, your business, your ministry. They are looking for you. Why? Because you are able to pass your time of trial and your time of testing, your time of refining. You will be confirmed. People will bring you a word to confirm what God is doing in this new season, in your day season. You have heavenly endorsement. What do I mean by that? Do you remember when Jesus went to meet John the Baptist at the River Jordan? And the Bible says the Holy Spirit alighted on him like a dove, came down gently upon him. The gentleness of the Holy Spirit. And what did God say? This is my beloved son in whom I am well. Please listen to him. Some of you, that your heavens will be open over you in your day seasons. And the voice of God will announce you to the world. God will announce you to the nations. God will announce you. God will affirm you and say, this is my servant. This is my daughter. This is my son. Connect with him. Help him. Love him. Show, come on, show them to the abroad place. I'm talking to somebody watching me this afternoon. Last but not least, you will be established. Establishment is coming to you and it's coming to me. In the season that we are in, glory be to God. Establishment. In your day season, that's when everything, the work of your hands are established. No shaking. If you are listening to me, say to yourself, no shaking, no shaking. Ah, my God, your faith doesn't waver. You are no shaking. Everything you build is standing, is growing, is flourishing. You are triumphant. You have victory lap upon victory lap upon victory lap. That is your destiny. That is your purpose. That is what God has destined for you.
and I in the season you are in. So let's wrap up episode number five today. Episode five, understanding your seasons. This is part two from the series, This Journey Called Life. I pray that you understand that everything we've talked about, you make a note of who you ought to be during your nice seasons, the activities that characterizes nice seasons, and you've learned about what happens when you come into your day season. If you know these, then you can easily discern and know that, oh, that is why she behaved that way towards me. Oh, that is why he's behaving that way towards me. If that is the reason why they did what they did because now you have understanding. You have knowledge of understanding. Now you begin to apply wisdom. You begin to pray more. You begin to press in further. You begin to seek the face of God because now you understand by reason of all these activities that you are in your season when it's night time or daytime so we wrap up episode five so your day and your night seasons are under spiritual seasons let me tell you i am so full of the word of god and a fresh anointing for episode six don't miss this thursday episode six is fruitful seasons oh the deep insights the holy spirit has unraveled for me to speak to the nations about don't miss episode six this thursday by the grace of god We'll look at fruitful seasons. Your life will never be the same. Do me a favor, would you? If you enjoyed watching, can you put a comment in and let me know what blessed you, what you took from today's episode five. I need you to like my Facebook page. It's Lady Rev Rosie Noah. Look for Rev Rosie Noah on Facebook. That's the official page on there. If you're watching me now on Facebook, you are probably on my personal Facebook page, which is fine. There are others joining in this big family. So go to Rev Rosie Noah on Facebook, like it. Follow me on there. All the persons will be there. But most importantly, anybody watching me, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go to YouTube and look for Rev Rosie Noah. That's my channel. Subscribe, like it, comment, share. For me, sharing is much, is much more important. There are people who work during the day. Some are not watch me at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But when they get off work or when they are home, they will come back and watch this and it will be a blessing. I want you to take that challenge. Share this video. Share when I is finalized and posted. Share on your Facebook page. Share in your WhatsApp group. Let somebody know. Let somebody hear because I believe this will be a blessing to somebody else. I love you. I appreciate all of you. I'm so excited I get to do what I'm doing. I love it, love it, love it. I'm excited because I'm empowering people. I'm edifying. I'm inspiring. I'm transforming. I'm influencing society through this program, Refreshing Time. And until I see you again on Thursday, it is I love you. With the love of Jesus. God loves you. Jesus loves you more. Please stay blessed and remember what you are learning. Be a doer of the word and go through your seasons. Pass all your tests. Be refined and bring glory and honor to God. God bless you for coming on Refreshing Time today with Lady Rev Rosie Noah. Again, the end of episode five. Have a wonderful week. Love you. Bye.